Hello everybody, welcome back to Rain and Pause. I am Mitch and today I am tackling a new pour technique. So I am going to be experimenting with some Dutch pours. Now I'm doing a voiceover for this video because my audio didn't record for this and a couple of videos before this one. So voiceovers, it will be for these. So I'm gonna try and remember everything that I said during these videos, maybe a little bit hard. So I'm just gonna make it up as I go. Um, so uh, I wanted to venture out of my comfort zone and try a couple of pours that are not Shelly Art Blooms, um, and to try and come up with a pouring medium recipe that will work for the majority of pours. Uh, and the reason I want to do this is because I want to know how I can incorporate this little piggy pigments into any pour style, um, because this is a question that we get asked quite commonly in the This Little Piggy group, and um, I wanted to know for myself how I could do that. So the piggy that I'm going to be using today is this little piggy Boastful, that's that beautiful green colour up there, and I've got some tube paints as well. Now I'm going to be using Erica Hughes um, Dutch pour recipe um, for dispersing my piggies and for that I'm using heavy gel gloss medium. This one is by Atelier and you can use any gel gloss medium that you have on hand. Liquitex makes a brand, uh, Golden I had there as well in semi-gloss. Semi-gloss will also work but you want the gloss. Now the reason you want the gloss for the shimmery pigments is so that it doesn't dull their shine once it's dry by using a matte medium you can dull the shine of the pigment so uh, i was just showing off here that the gel is quite thick it's very textured um, so it's great for doing texture work with and in fact you can just mix your piggies with the gel gloss and use it for texture work uh, for my piggies though to disperse them erica suggests a mixture of 50 percent gel gloss medium and 50% water. So I've made my little mixture and I'm going to be weighing that out now. So I'll show you the measurements that I've done and I'll show you how to disperse your piggies in that mixture. Now earlier on I showed you the colours that I was going to be using for this pour. So up in the corner there I have Matisse Payne's Grey, Matisse Cerulean Blue, Matisse Cobalt Teal and I also have Pebeo Iridescent Blue Black. Now I'm going to weigh everything out and I have these, um, I've got a cup here that I'm going to measure my pouring medium into. And like I said, to start with, I'm just going to be mixing up a dispersal liquid for our pigments. And to do this, I'm going to mix 50% gel gloss medium with 50% water. So I do this by weight, not by volume. Um, you could do it by volume, either way is fine. Um, by, by weight is going to be um, the easiest way for me and I'm making up a fair bit of this because I do plan to do several techniques um, and this will be the medium that I use to disperse my piggies throughout all of them. Uh, so I decided to go with I believe 40 grams of, um, maybe I did 60, what did I do? Let's keep watching and find out. <laughs> this is as exciting for me as it is for you guys. Maybe I did 100, I don't know. Um, watching this back I'm realizing that this Fluid Heart Coaster stick is um, a bit smaller than intended for this purpose. I could have just used a cup. Um, okay, so I did 75 grams of um, gel medium and 75 grams of just plain tap water. Um, using distilled water would be better for this if you're going for something that's archival. Because I'm experimenting, I'm not too fussed on that. Now, as I said, this is just a dispersal liquid. This isn't an actual pouring medium. Now, why do we need to disperse our piggies? Dispersing your piggies um, before you use them, and the stuck-up pigs, for that matter, any, any brand of pigment as well, the reason you want to disperse them first is so that each particle of pigment gets coated in your pouring medium, and it gets distributed throughout that... Um, that mixture before you add it into the main bulk of your pouring medium. The reason we do this is because you add is because if you add your piggies straight to your pouring medium, what can happen is they can clump up and not clump up in the sense that you're going to get big lumps of pigment. That can happen, but the particles will stick together and they won't fully dissolve. So what you'll end up with is a mixture that looks grey and muted, um, which you don't want. It'll look undersaturated and it won't look anything like what is in the jar. By doing this step, you're wetting each individual pigment and making a paste that's going to blend into your pouring medium much easier. So what I'm doing here is using my Fluid Art Co. Um, paint mixer, and that's just to break up the lumps in the gel medium and get this nice and homogenous. And I wasn't too fussed about bubbles in this because we're going to be adding this to our main um, pouring medium. However, my pigments were very bubbly for my Dutch pour, so I would advise doing this the day before, getting all those lumps out, and then just giving it a really quick stir the day after uh, 
to incorporate your pigments. So I'm just checking to see how thick this is. I wasn't sure how thick this should be, um, but pretty much 50% water, 50% gel gloss makes a nice runny liquid, which was perfect for dispersing my piggies. So thank you to Erica Hughes um, for this um, idea. And uh, I'll put a link to her YouTube channel in the description below. And you can find her at Erica Hughes Art on YouTube. Okay, so moving the scale out of the way now, uh, we're going to be eyeballing the rest of this. So I'm just pouring a little bit of my dispersal medium into my cup, and I do find that it is better to pour the dispersal medium in first and then add your pigment. So I'm just using whatever Boastful I had left in this little uh, jar. Now Boastful is one of the stuck up pigs, which is a beautiful uh, chameleon chrome color shifting pigment from um, Fluid Art Co. So you can find those at fluid-art.co along with your uh, little mixing sticks and the little piggy pigments. Now the mixing sticks that they sell on the Fluid Art Co website are absolutely perfect for uh, all of your paint mixing needs. They have a really nice thin blade on the bottom which gets into all the cracks and the little tight corners in the bottom of the containers. And the containers that I'm using to disperse this is just a little two ounce container, but it has one of those lips at the bottom with the raised center. So it can be difficult to get your uh, thicker mixing sticks into those. So I do use the Dirty Pour Artist mixing sticks. They're great for mixing up resin, but when mixing up pigments, they can be difficult to get into all the corners. Now, as you can see, I've got a really nice thick luscious mixture there and you can really see the color of the boastful. Now I did oversaturate that mixture quite a bit. You do not need as much pigment as what I put in there and it will look slightly gray if you choose to use less pigment. So with chameleon colors uh, in particular, you don't need as much pigment as if you were using one of the regular this little piggy colors. Now all I'm doing with the rest of my dispersal mixture is putting it into a little squeeze bottle so I've got that handy for later. You only need that if you are dispersing pigments. So I don't use that in any of the other pouring mediums that I've made up. Um, so uh, that will just sit aside. So now I'm going to attempt to make a pouring medium and my attempt worked out really, really well. I was quite happy with this recipe. So I'm going to show you the measurements that I used and how I mix this up. So I am using Australian Floetrol in my mixture because that's what I have access to. Um, but you can use whichever Floetrol or Oatrol product is available in your country. They will do the same thing in this instance. The other product I am using is Liquitex Gloss Medium. It used to be called Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish. It's the one with the green label, the lime green label. So if you are looking for that online, look for Liquitex Gloss Medium with the lime green label. You could also use the silver label, which is just Liquitex Pouring Medium. Now, initially I was going to measure things into a bottle. I decided against that because I needed to mix everything up and I needed to weigh things and adjust things and check the consistency as I went. So I forewent the bottle and uh, once I've got a working pouring medium, which I'm very happy with this one, I will put it into a bottle for later use. Okay, so all I did was uh, I used a stir stick to stir up the entire bucket of pouring medium. Turns out I didn't need to do that because it didn't separate like house paint usually does, but never be too safe um, and I'd much rather be safe than sorry when working with pouring mediums so that I'm incorporating all of those gloss mediums together. So now I'm just weighing out or not even weighing anything out I'm distributing some of that pouring medium into a cup because that bucket is a four litre bucket or a 3.78 litre bucket it's a gallon um, and it's much easier to distribute that pouring medium if it's in a smaller vessel. Uh, so I have since decanted some of that into a big container um, and I'm using that instead. Um, so just before I poured the flow troll in, I remembered better shake it because it's Australian flow troll. Definitely always shake your Australian flow troll because the components in it can separate and this can cause issues with other techniques such as the Shelly Art Bloom um, if your cell activator doesn't have both of those components in it. So I decided to go for a two to one ratio of Liquitex pouring medium to Australian flow troll. So in this case, I mixed up 40 grams of the Liquitex pouring medium and 20 grams of the Australian flow troll. Pretty simple and easy recipe to follow. And this turned out to give me a nice um, full bodied mixture. It wasn't very thick, but it was a little bit too thick for the Dutch pour. Now, as you'll see in my results a bit later on, um, I didn't want to add too much flow troll to this mixture because the first time that I tried this technique, 
um, and I used a lot of Australian Floetrol, I didn't know that it was thinner than the American stuff. Now we do know that Australian Floetrol gives amazing cells and lacing, uh, the lacing most of all, and that's pretty much what my last Dutch pour had. It was just all lacing everywhere and no solid colour. So this time I knew that I wanted to tone down the Floetrol and just thin out with water. However, uh, next time I do the Dutch pours, I will thin it with Floetrol because I didn't get quite as much lacing as I expected. So knowing what each product does in your pouring medium and how to manipulate that will give you different results in your uh, final pours. So this little bit of pouring medium, I only mixed up 60, 60 milliliters worth. Um, I did end up mixing up a bigger batch, um, especially because I needed white as my flood coat. So all I'm doing with this is I am weighing out half and half to do a quick test. So I'm just measuring in uh, 30 milliliters of that mixed up pouring medium. Here I am mixing it up again for my white. So I'll just fast forward this um, and then I'll show you how I add my colors. So I've sped this part up. All I did was weigh out another lot of pouring medium. I ended up doing 200 milliliters of pouring medium and 100 milliliters of Floetrol. And I separated a little bit of that out and I used that to make up my white. And this will be the flood coat or the base coat for the Dutch pour. And then I'm just measuring out that 60 milliliters of uh, pouring medium that we had up top, splitting that into two little cups and that will be the two colors that I used for the test. Now I also have my Boastful there, which I'm just putting a lid on because I'm not going to use that for my test, so I don't want to waste all that precious pigment. Um, and I'm just going to use two tube paints to do some little tests on my tiles. So again, I've got my white there. I've mixed that up fresh. I would uh, definitely mix these up the day before I wanted to paint, or at least a couple of hours before I wanted to paint so that the bubbles would come out of them uh, because there were quite a few of them. And even though you can torch most of them out, my paintings did still dry with a little bit of um, a bubbly texture. Now the first color I am using for my test is Matisse Payne's Gray. I wanted to just do two little blue colors. Now what I should have done is put my paint into one of the cups first and added just a tiny bit of pouring medium to disperse it because you can see just at the bottom of the screen there, I didn't have my camera really set up for this, just at the bottom of the screen there, the paint did not blend very well with the pouring medium because it was very chunky and grainy. So I used my pigment blender here and that was mistake number two because now I ended up with a frothy, disgusting mixture of paint that I couldn't use. I basically just made whipped paint. So. Uh, just like we have to disperse the pigments, with certain paints I would recommend uh, dispersing them in the same way, except you're not using that dispersal liquid, just use your pouring medium. So just pour a, uh, put a little blob of paint in the base of the container, add a tiny bit of pouring medium to that. You can weigh it if you want to make exact measurements. Um, do your paint first, add your pouring medium, give that a little bit of a stir, and then add the rest of the pouring medium once you have a nice thick paste. From that point, then you can add water or Floetrol to thin that down to the consistency that you need. So I did end up remixing a second batch of this Payne's Grey. However, when I came back the, a day later to check on them, that Payne's Grey was perfectly usable because all of the bubbles had dissipated. Because the Dutch pour is one of the thinnest techniques, um, often known as the thinnest technique, um, the bubbles will pop quite quickly. However, it does take a little bit for all of them to rise to the surface. Okay, so just mixing up my cobalt teal here, and this paint behaved much better than the Payne's Grey. It was much smoother, and it's also a little bit uh, less solid. Um, it's a little bit more runny, so it, it blended into my pouring medium very, very easily. Now I've got a plastic bowl that I use to do all of my paint pouring on, um, and I have a four by four inch tile. I'm just making sure it's nice and level. I've got this little spirit level that I bought to do cakes. Um, and making sure that my cakes were level and it has now become my tile leveling device. So uh, it comes in very handy and especially with fluid art techniques, you want your paintings to be perfectly level. So I have set up a little area off to the side where everything is level uh, and I'll put my artworks to dry once they are done being filmed. So to start off with, I just poured out a little bit of that white to be my flood coat and I just used my mouth to blow that out because that's what I've seen people do uh, um, 
and I'm just using my finger to cover the sides. Now, because this was tile and the paint was not very thick at all, it did not cover the sides. So if I was doing this on tiles, I would definitely paint the sides either before or afterwards. And I think afterwards may be a bit easier. Um, I don't know why, but I just feel like it would be um, un until I give it a go. <laughs> I can't really say for sure. Uh, now, I did thin my paints with a little bit of water, and the way I did that was I thinned my white paint first and then matched the colours to my white paint. I feel like that's the easiest way to do things so that everything remains consistent rather than, you know, working towards the thinnest colour. Um, although you could definitely do that if there is one colour that's thinner than all of the others, thin all of your other colours to that consistency rather than trying to thicken your thinner colour. Uh, you can do it using a little bit of Liquitex Liqui Thick, um, but that will make things very, very thick very quickly, or a little bit of gel medium. So just making a line across the tile, a little bit of paint, I didn't want too much, and then I'm just going to blow it out with my mouth. So sorry that my, face, my head's in the way. Um, like I said, it wasn't very set up for this, but uh, I'm just blowing the white paint over the line and I will blow this out to make my very first Dutch pour attempt. So this little test was just to get the consistency right, see if everything is flowing nicely, and it was, and that means that I can proceed with using this pouring medium as an actual pouring medium. So the result I've got there is very soft, very muted, very um, flowy, and that was just because of the amount of paint that I put down, how hard I blew into the paint, and because I covered my blue paint with the white. So if you do not want that really soft look, don't blow your white paint over the top. And if you do want a more muted look, then that's something that you can do. Blow the paint over the top of your colors before you blow them out. So now I'm just gonna measure up and mix up a couple of different colors and we'll go from there. So now I have mixed up a couple of different colors. I mixed up the Cerulean Blue and the Pebeo Iridescent Blue Black, as well as the TLP Boastful. So just doing the same thing that I did with the first tile, putting down my white paint, using my spatula to spread it out because I think that was much quicker and easier than trying to blow it out. On a larger painting, maybe the hairdryer to blow that out would be suitable, but for these little tiles, I was pretty happy with just using the spatula. And because it is such a fluid paint, it will self-level. That was the major concern that I had for these pouring mediums, is that they self-level and they dry without lumps or bumps on the painting. Uh, that would mean that your paint is thin enough and it will flow. The other thing I forgot to do on the last painting was to torch out the air bubbles. So I remember to do that here. And I'm just tilting my paint to make sure it's nice and level so that I've got an even coating of paint across the whole tile. So we're going to layer our colors down again. I've got a fresh batch of the Payne's Gray and you can see already it's much less bubbly and frothy because I did not use the Piggy Mixer this time. <laughs> and I also have the Cobalt Teal. This combination together, just the two colors is really, really pretty. And I'll definitely be doing um, a larger piece just with those two colors because I don't think you need any more colors than that. Uh, they just worked so well. So there is definitely an art to blowing out Dutch pours. Uh, the technique leaves a lot to be desired on my end, um, but I was much happier with this result. Uh, and as you can see, I didn't blow out the white over, to, over the top of the colors this time, and I've got a much more vibrant look. I'm really, really happy with this little tile, and I have decided that I will make a set of coasters uh, using this color scheme and this design. So it works out really well. I'm also using the torch to pop bubbles. So a really quick torch over the surface will pop bubbles. And if you bring the torch closer so that the heat actually touches the surface, you will produce cells that will open up the cells underneath by breaking the surface tension of the layers above and allowing those bottom colors to show through. So I'm gonna put this one aside to dry and I think it's time to tackle an eight by eight inch canvas. So here is a close up of that one. And you can see I've got some lovely little cells in there, but not as much lacing. So by um, thinning my paint down with Floetrol instead of water, I'll get more lacing. So I'll set this up for a eight by eight canvas and let's do another pour. Okay, so we have a much better angle this time. So you can actually see what I'm doing and hopefully when I blow it out, you can see that process. So I've got my eight by eight inch deep edged canvas. 
this is just a square canvas um, that I've had sitting around for ages and I thought these will be perfect to practice on. Uh, and later in these uh, video series, because I have done a couple of different techniques since filming this one, uh, you'll see that I use some old canvases and how those techniques cover up the paintings underneath. So again, just using my spatula to spread everything around. Now, ideally, if you have a blank canvas, you would want to paint the sides the same color as the base uh, color that you're using. Uh, and that's just going to make sure that one, your sides are covered and there's no bare canvas. You also want to make sure that your canvas is nice and tight so that the paint doesn't sag in the middle. Now, the reason you want your canvas to be nice and tight is so that it doesn't sag in the middle. Uh, and that's bad because if your paint pulls in the center, your design will look puckered and everything can shift, uh, which you don't want. Uh, likewise, you want to be wiping the drips up when you uh, set these aside to dry, wipe the drips off the bottom uh, as gravity will pull those down and will also pull your design off the edges of the canvas. Now we'll just give this a little torch to get rid of some of those air bubbles and we're going to start layering down our paints. And I wanted to do a diagonal on this one, I believe. So I'm gonna start at the bottom left corner and work my way up to the top right. Um, by working on a diagonal, I completely lie. I'm starting at the bottom right, working my way up to the top left. <laughs> um, so by working on a diagonal, you actually increase the amount of space you have to work with for your blowout, because the diagonal is the longest part of a triangle or, you know, the end intersection inside a square. So uh, by doing it this way, we've got a nice big area to blow out all of our paint. Whereas if we went um, straight across, it's kind of boring, looks kind of flat. Uh, whereas this is going to add a little bit of, um, you know, interest to the piece. So I've laid down my Matisse Payne's Grey. We had Cerulean Blue, uh, sorry, Pebio Iridescent Blue Black, our TLP Boastful, Cobalt Teal, and then the Cerulean Blue on top. And just laying on a little bit of color, you really do not need too much because this is going to be blown out. And then because I wanted to really see that Payne's Grey, I just added a little bit on top. Actually, I believe that was Matisse Indigo. I think I did Payne's Grey on the bottom and Indigo on top. So now I'm going to blow this out. And the paint moves very differently to a Shelley Art Bloom. It's way thinner, much thinner than I'm used to. Um, so trying to get the um, technique down is very difficult, especially if you're blowing out with your mouth. So I've got a really nice soft sort of blow out here, sort of Dutch pour. Um, and what I did really like about this was that you can very easily manipulate the design just by blowing a little more in certain areas and a little less in others. Um, and you can fix up certain things to an extent. You definitely do not want to overblow your petals um, because they'll simply just disintegrate. As you can see that that's happened there. There was a nice petal there and I just blew it out way too much. So lots to learn with this technique, but I've got very high hopes for it. So blasting it with the torch to pop some bubbles and create some cells um, looks really, really nice. So I'll show the dry results in the next video. Um, the next video I do a ring pour and uh, the dried results of these are really, really fantastic. So I'll be varnishing these and I'll be hanging these in my own home because I love them so much. Now I'm going to speed up the next one uh, because you've already seen how I do it. So I'm going to speed this one up and I'll guide you through what I've done. So again, just applying the base paint with my stir stick. Um, and again, my mixtures were 50% gel gloss medium and 50% water to disperse my uh, pigment, followed by my pouring medium, which was two parts Liquitex gloss medium and one part Australian Floetrol. Use whatever Floetrol is available in your country, or you could even use water. That will give you a similar effect. And I'm just layering up my paints in the same order that I did last time, except this time I'm putting a little bit more Boastful on top, so it can be seen a bit more. And I tried a different pattern. Now, the thing I found interesting was even though I did this in a semicircle, uh, I got a similar looking diagonal pattern. So I found that very interesting. Just blowing that out on each side, so I get all of that paint um, spread out and I'm really quite happy with this one. So I'm just using my finger to do some modifications. Don't push too hard and don't let your finger touch the canvas underneath because you will end up with a blank spot. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's a little tip. Torch out all those bubbles and 
modify as you need. Now this brings us to the end of the video and I'm really happy with these results. Stay tuned for the next video where I show you the dried results and as usual if you like what I'm doing here don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.